Welcome to today's Art Chat. I'm Laura Stiefelmoor, and today I'm joined by two early childhood educators who run the Lilly School for Child Development, which is a part of Easter Seals of Southwest Florida. The Lilly School is a licensed, inclusive early childhood and education program for children six weeks to five years old, serving both typical kids and kids with disabilities. Although it has been physically closed since mid-March, it continues to serve the families who rely on it. Today I'm joined by Brittany Bryant, who is the director of the Lilly School, She's been in the role for about three years and in her words has loved every minute of it. She's currently finishing up her master's in early childhood education. She's joined by Jody Ann Beezer, who's the instructional specialist and VPK teacher at the Lilly School. Jody Ann has been at the Lilly School for seven years now and she's currently attending St. Leo University for a degree in early childhood education. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Absolutely. <laughs> So before we go any further, I'd like to get your take on this artwork that I've selected for you. What is your reaction to this painting? Um, so what I'm seeing, okay, so when I first saw this, I'm thinking of, it could be, I'm taking it on like as an educator role. So educator, mother, um, guardian, foster parent, anything like that. Just the overwhelming um, love and I feel like attention and joy that, um, a woman has for the children in her life. So more specifically, just with like what we do in connection to that, um, you know, children make the world go round, I think. And, you know, as caretakers, it's just so important for us to show um, that love and care and affection. Um, and that's what I'm getting from this piece, I think. Yeah, so love, affection, being a caretaker, being a, a parent or a foster parent or a provider. Um, yeah, Jody, did you have any other I kind of having, I'm kind of having the same concept as well, mm -hmm. um, but also is to show um, the way a caretaker, mother, or foster parent, as Brittany said, but not only that, the amount of children that are in the picture, mm -hmm. and you still see where each child is being supported no matter what. Um, yeah. I, I like that and you can see where each choi child has a joy or present they're present with that caretaker as well mm -hmm. yeah I love that they're very they all have seemed to have like their own personality right yeah yeah <laughs> and Brittany, sure. I think I cut you off. Were you gonna? Were you gonna? And they them? well, they all just look like super happy in their own way. They're all just like super <laughs> <Right>. entertained. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so this is a painting, and I've got the information here. This is a painting cool. um, by Peter Paul Rubens um, from about 1625. He was a, a Flemish master, um, and it hangs in the Ringling Museum galleries with four other paintings that are in the series, these really large scale paintings, but this is the only one that has kids in it. So this is the one that I selected for you today. Um, and, and just like you were saying, you know, the, the overwhelming amount of happy babies, I think is, is why I chose this for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as for, as a mother, for me, I look at this and I'm like, this looks like chaos. The babies are naked. They're going to pee all over, you know, the, two <laughs> in the bottom right look like they're going to get into trouble. Someone's not a lion, like someone's going to get hurt. Um, and there's this like sense of chaos for me, which is so interesting because neither of you really picked up on the chaos. So I think you're so used to having um, a bunch of kids around and feeling totally in control. It literally looks like our everyday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm kind of, it's like kind of like drop off hour at daycare, right? So for me, yeah. I see chaos, but I think ultimately there's a sense of, of control. Everything sort of centers on that female figure in the middle and that circular composition actually lets you know that everything is really where it should be and everything is kind of in place. So yeah, that's, that's really why I thought this might resonate with, with both of you. So I know it's much quieter around the Lilly School these days. Um, how have you and the teachers maintained contact with your students? And what does virtual school look like, um, especially for, for parents of kids with disabilities who really rely not only on teachers, but on your therapists? So our center is, I feel like, and I say this, you know, I'm obviously biased. So I feel like we're very special and unique in the county. Um, you know, we're inclu an inclusive center. So we serve so many different children who have so many different needs. Um, and so the coronavirus pandemic has been a little bit of a challenge for us to be able to really specifically reach each individual family for what they're needing. But mm -hmm. as an agency, we've really, really worked hard to, I feel like, establish um, good communication. I mean, Jody can vouch for this. She's in contact with her families every week, uh, multiple times a day. You know, we're sending them um, curriculum items and literacy items, um, developmental things that they can be working on at home. 
uh, the agency is doing virtual therapy for all of our families that are needing therapy. So that service is continuing on. Um, it's been a challenge, but I think, you know, we're on week, I think we counted week six right now. So um, we've kind of gotten it down, I feel like, um, but communication has been key, the biggest thing. And Jody, did you wanna did you wanna add anything? Um, yes. Um, as Brittany said, communication has been key. Um, one of the great things that we do too is our students are still being able to receive not only the education piece that we provide every day, but also the therapy piece as well. Um, so that's great. The other day, I got to sit in on two therapy sessions, and it was just for support. Um, for two of my students that was having some little bit of a difficult time because of course everything is different right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're stuck at home. Um, normally we would have a therapist take us to the therapy room and we're not having that. So it's just amazing that the team that we have right now and everything that we've been doing um, to get through to our kids and get through to our parents. Um, I know for me, um, we've been creating fun little videos here and there to post for our kids to see, mm -hmm. at least to see our faces every day. Um, it's a joy to do those videos. Um, you get nervous for the first time, mm -hmm. but then <laughs> as the more you do it, you get better at it. Um, but just to see how being in a classroom setting for seven years and now you're out of that setting, but to see how we're getting creative at, at home with getting these videos to our parents. I, I love it. And I think it's incredible. That's and I will say too, Laura, like um, shout, special shout out to our teachers. I mean, they really have just stepped up major mm -hmm. and they've been amazing. And I mean, I couldn't be more proud of them for their ability to kind of adapt to change over these last few weeks and still make sure that they're giving their all to the families. So it's been, it's been pretty, pretty cool to watch. Yeah, and that's, that actually brings me back to this painting because um, this, this female figure in the center here, she always seems so patient and kind and loving all of the adjectives you sort of described at the beginning. And I know those are the qualities of all of your teachers at, at Lily School. Um, but so for parents who are trying to emulate those teachers who are trying to juggle working from home and helping their kids with school or therapy and, and childcare, what advice do you have for parents to sort of be the best parent slash teacher slash therapist they can be? You know, they're all in one now. I think my biggest advice to them is to just remain patient and to not be afraid to ask for help or support. I mean, I think we've got, we've all gotten through this together because the parents have such good relationships with their teachers and they're able to call them or text them and ask questions and ask for support. And I think that's the biggest thing is just for everybody to remain patient and to just um, remember that there's others there for to support you. Mm -hmm. Jody, yeah, I, don't know. Um, I think to patience is key, mm -hmm. um, but I also think too that sometimes you may not get everything done in a day, and it's okay. It's okay for you to start it and take a break and come back to it. Um, few breaks here and there, just not only for you, but also for your child, because now you're everything in one at home and you may have more than one child. So I think it's okay for you to know that it's all right for you to take a break and come back to those activities as well. Really good advice. And, and for other parents listening, um, you're the early childhood experts. When is the right time to have conversations about the coronavirus with your children? What is the right age? You know, we sort of see an age of children represented here in this painting. When do kids sort of start to become aware of what's going on and how do parents sort of mitigate anxiety in their children if it's being expressed? What advice do you have for parents about that? Um, I mean, I, pers I would say um, if they haven't had those conversations already, you know, um, there's any time is a good time. Um, you know, the children developmentally are starting to be able to comprehend a little bit more. And when you see kind of like the eight, like a older one, two year old, um, but the CDC, and there's a lot of great resources that you can search that have um, actually techniques and strategies on how to explain what's going on, mm -hmm. and that could be super helpful. And there are a lot of things that are age appropriate for specific age groups. So whether it's just a very small conversation about the coronavirus and the anxiety and things that come with it and why things have changed, why am I home all the time, mom? Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a lot of resources out there that parents could look for. Um, and we have shared some too through our Facebook page, um, just about how to, what, how to have those conversations. So I think any age is just basic based upon, you know, where you think your child is developmentally and what they're going to be able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. 
also creating a story as well instead of just yeah. having it raw um we could create stories as well just to kind of make it a little bit more smooth and a little bit more understandable for them mm -hmm. um because at this age group too it might be a little difficult to understand okay why am i stuck here with mom or dad mm -hmm. and i'm not going in the car to get to school i'm not seeing my teachers so um create a story time out of it um give them a little bit more um that can help them to understand better. Yeah, that's a great idea. So what I'm hearing overall is just that there are a lot of resources out there. Parents shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. Um, if things are feeling as chaotic as they might initially look in this painting to parents, it's okay mm -hmm. to slow down, take a break, and just you know find support where you can. Is that, that yeah. the, the somewhat, yeah. Um, so I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're busy and you're, you're talking with your students and your other teachers all day. So I'll let you go. But I wanted to just give the last word to both of you. What message do you have for anyone who might be listening to this art chat? What do you want people to know? Um, I think one thing I'll say through all of this um, that, you know, it's been tough to adapt for all of us, but um, we're all in this together. So I think that's the one thing that I would want to say to our families right now, if I were talking to them or our children, we're all going through this together. There's not one single person who's not experiencing this. So just to remember, um, you know, the, the unity that has brought us together and that we will get through all this. Great. And Jody? I think for me, um, I have come to realize how great of super moms and super dads that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, they're wearing an incredible cape right now. And um, it's a cape that I want them to know that they're supported. We're right under that, that cape with them as well, supporting them all the way, even if it's just by a Zoom call or just a regular phone call, that they have our support and we're with them each step of the way. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for joining me today and, and keep doing the great work that you're doing. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, Laura. For having us.